Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And this is Nika Monford, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. And welcome back to the Snob OS Show, the show for Apple snobs, where we talk all things Apple and then some. We definitely welcome you back to another week. This is episode 263 of the Snob OS Show. So we've been around for a while, so we definitely want to say thank you to all those who have been rocking with us so long, who've been listening to us, downloading, sharing, all those good things. We definitely appreciate it, and we're going to keep going as long as you're going. Yep. Uh, if you do want to support the show, uh, you can definitely go to patreon.com forward slash snobOSCast. And as a thank you for sh- supporting the show financially, you get to listen to the show live. That means you get it early, and you also get access to the audio SS feed of the exclusive show that we do before this that you don't get any of that information. But you got to be a Patreon supporter to be a part of that. But to say thank you, we do give you some extra goodies. So we definitely want to let you know about that. And we're going to get right into the show. As per usual, we always start with the lowdown. So there's not a lot of, I don't want to say interesting news. All of these stories that I have right now are more kind of like announcements, Mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of the TikTok story. And I'll get to that a little later. But before that, we're going to get into the Apple cards, the Apple credit card. If you were one of the first group of people who got them, Back in 2019, uh, you should be starting to see a notification via email that your Apple card is expiring and they're going to be in the process of sipping out a new card. So Apple card has been around for a while, but it hasn't been around long enough for them to actually start to ship replacements. And I think I was a I'm pretty sure I jumped on the boat as soon as possible. So. I was going to ask you, have you seen the um, email or any sort of notification that a new uh, card is coming? I have not. And when I was reading this, I was like, hmm, I haven't gotten anything. And I was like, I know we, of course, we're usually early adopters. And I think that we both got ours right around the same time. So I haven't seen anything yet. Um, I'll assume they will be coming out soon. But a bigger question that this particular article, I don't believe, addresses, the cards are titanium, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the hard, like metal type material. Mm-hmm. How do you discard that? So <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll take <laughs> that back. I do know because I have a Amex card that's one of the titanium, that weird mm-hmm. metal. I don't know if it's titanium because it doesn't sound like the Apple card, but it's got that non-credit card foldable. It doesn't have the plastic, metal. It doesn't have the plastic yeah, feel yeah, yeah, yeah. to it. Yeah. And uh, I still have my old one mm-hmm. simply because I'm too lazy to <laughs> recycle it and you got to contact American Express. I know it sounds simple. These are first world problems. I get it. Right. But you got to contact um, American Express. And I think they have a link or something that you got to find and you can recycle a card. You can mail it back to American Express and they'll dispose of it. I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure, but there's no indication, but I'm pretty sure Apple is going to or has the same sort of process to where I imagine to where they, um, oh yeah, sure. It's 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 right here, if I just read. Is it in the <laughs> article? Did I miss it? Replacement cards will include a prepaid shipping label ah. so that customers can send in their old Apple card to be recycled. So there's, that answers that one. <laughs> right in front of my face, but if I would've just read a little bit. No, but the, but, the, but that's a good point because there are a lot of different cards that are coming out with this new fangled metal or new material other than that you know traditional credit card and you just can't cut that up you just can't put that in the shredder you just won't do it you definitely just don't want to throw it in the trash nope so yeah i'm assuming i would hope and apple kind of confirmed that they are providing ways that you can ship your old car back my guess is when i got my replacement amex i didn't follow the instructions so now the card just sits <laughs> every time I walk past where I keep all my credit cards, it sits right mm-hmm. there. And it's like, man, I need to get rid of this. And then I go on about my business and then forget yeah. about it. So <laughs> yeah. pay attention. If you do get a new replacement Apple credit card, please ship it back or you just be sitting and looking at it because you don't want to throw it away because, you know, somebody can yeah. get a hold of it. And who knows? Apple's got all these newfangled technology stuff, but they ain't going to stop nobody from trying. <laughs> right. And the same thing like with Amex, you know, the your your card number's on it. So you definitely want to throw that away. The I guess the unique thing about the Apple card is that it doesn't have a card number on it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, to see your virtual number and all that stuff, you have to go into the app. And I think in the article, it said that it would be refreshing the um, security codes as well. So technically, I guess if someone got it, they wouldn't be able to use it. But still, you don't want your you don't stuff want to try it. out there. You don't you want don't... somebody to try it. Mm, right. Because right. they will. <laughs> yeah. They always will. Yeah. Well, all right. So and that's... Is, is this article, is it saying? Okay. Never mind. It, it looked like the car is was like, because it's this black Goldman Sachs thing. I was like, on the article we're looking at, I was like, are they changing the car colors? But no, it just looks like it's just a little graphic. That's just the the email that pops yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so that's going to do with that. The next story we're going into, uh, apparently some people were experiencing a alarm clock bug when they put their phone, was set an alarm, and they set the phone down. Some users were experiencing it was either muted, like turned all the way down, or didn't come on at all. And enough people complained to where Apple uh, put out an announcement. Uh, they said Apple is aware of an issue causing some iPhone alarms to not play the expected sound, according to the report. And according to the report that I'm reading, Apple is, quote, unquote, working on it. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to come in some up near iOS 17.4. whatever, or even I iOS 17.5. Uh, maybe it comes out when um, I, I don't keep up with the betas. I'm assuming mm -hmm. there's a beta out right now. Question mark. Yes, it is. Okay, so maybe the uh, bug or the bug fix for the iPhone alarm clock issue will be out in this next bug. That's already the next beta, rather. That's already already making the rounds. But until then, um, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But I think there is a workaround to where if you are experiencing this issue. And you mm -hmm. can't wait until this uh, beta comes out that becomes an actual official release that that supposedly may fix it. There's a workaround, but you got to hang out with me until the hookup and we'll kind of break that down for you. So have you had, did you experience this at all or is this another one? that? So it's interesting because I have an alarm every for every morning and I've been noticing lately that sometimes it didn't go off, but I was like, maybe I just slept through it. So right. maybe I have experienced it and didn't realize it. Cause if, if the alarm doesn't go off, I mean, it's not like I have, you know, anywhere to be, you know, when that alarm goes off. Mm. And so when I, you know, do wake up, cause I normally still wake up around that time anyway, it's just like, huh, did the alarm go off or did I sleep through it? I don't know. So I think I may have, I could have, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But yeah. I think I have. And I was assuming when I first read it, I was assuming because I was assuming that the only people who are experiencing this issue is if they use the standby mode and actually put their phone on a stand and then turn it uh, landscape. So it shows mm -hmm. that always on, you know, uh, display, it kind of shows the weather and it shows the clock and it may show photos or whatever the case may be. But that ain't the case. It's just flat out. If you have an iPhone and you use the alarm clock, you could be one of the people that your phone is not waking you up or, you know, wake, you know, whatever alarm you got set, you know, it's not mm -hmm. alerting you on that. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. And the only response we get from Apple is we're aware of it and we're working on it. Yeah, because I don't use that standby mode thing like intentionally if it happens to be laying that way. OK, but it's not something that I intentionally do. But I think I may be affected by this. Mm, okay. I might All right. be. All right. Mm. Um, I use standby mode, but I still haven't figured out how to get it to work. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> what, what I mean by that is my assumption of standby mode is if I lock the phone and put it on mm -hmm. the display in, port, in landscape mode, anytime I look at the alarm clock or look at the display, it should display something. Right, it should have mm -hmm. I set up. I'm not getting that 100, percent and I think that the way the always on because I've got a, a iPhone, what is this 15 that's got the always on feature. Mm -hmm. My guess is the attention awareness is not noticing that I'm looking at the screen, so it, oh. so it turns off. But I don't want that. I want it to be always on, whether I'm 
whether it sees looking at it or not. Right. That's what I thought. And I thought that's what it was. That's what I thought always on meant means that regardless of the situation, it's always on. That is apparently <laughs> not the case. So maybe I'm missing well, the setting okay. or maybe I'm not setting it up right. But I assumed that I've got the phone that has the always on fe feature built into it. Mm -hmm. I've got it in standby mode. In standby mode, there is an option to turn on awareness, so it does mm -hmm. kind of see you. I assumed, okay, well, if I turn that off, then it, then it will stay on. Forever. It will stay on. It's not waiting for me to be <laughs> aware, but I still ain't figured out the rhyme or reason. So, but that's mm -hmm. another subject for another day. All right, the second or the third story I got is MLS season pass. Uh, Apple TV or Apple signed exclusive rights to MLS. So that means they get to, you got to go through Apple to get MLS season pass. <laughs> For those who have no idea what I'm talking about is major league <laughs> soccer. I'm aware. I'm aware. Some people really don't care about soccer in America. So yeah. I'm one of those people. Um, I have tuned into a couple games. Um, I, basically what comes on on cable, but I have considered getting MLS season pass and it looks like now is the perfect time to do it because they have dropped the price for the remainder of the MLS season from $99 down to $69. Now, the benefit to that is if you're already subscriber to Apple TV Plus, like myself, that price goes down to $59. So just wanted to put that out there. If there are any people out there who are uh, MLS um, fans, uh, specifically or recently, uh, Lionel Messi has came over to uh, enter Miami, I think the team he's on. So his his um, games, whenever they're on TV, get a lot of attention. So if you are an MLS season fan and you want to get the hookup on the season pass there, make it a little bit cheaper. So I just thought I'd put that out there. I still haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. um, as But as a matter of fact, me and my son are going to an Atlanta United game on the nice. 11th of May. So that's where my season pass money went. <laughs> <laughs> to the tickets <laughs> to actually go to the game. <laughs> nice. All right. So that's it for that story. The only other story that I have is TikTok apparently is bypassing the in-app, in Apple Store's in-app purchase commission. And basically what they're doing is a new report claims that TikTok might be bypassing Apple's App Store in-app purchase system. The report says that TikTok is presenting some of its users with a link to a website to purchase coins instead of using Apple's in-app purchase flow. Of course, the popular thing with the Apple in-app purchase flow is TikTok is subjected to that 30% or whatever Apple has agreed that TikTok should pay anytime. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this. I was like, in-app purchases for TikTok? And I was like, oh, yeah. What are I mean, they buying? Right. I'm like, apparently I'm not into TikTok enough, but basically it's similar to Twitch. If you're watching somebody on Twitch and you want to uh, give them like a like, like a the tip. little coin things that you see yes. that pop up when people do the viral videos right. and all the little weird things. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right. You can do that in TikTok, but in order to buy those coins to actually do that on your favorite influencer or follower, whatever the case may be, you have to buy those things. So TikTok, of course, is not of course, according to the story, they are sending some of their users links outside of the app store to buy these coins, which wouldn't subject them to that commission that Apple mm -hmm. wants. And I brought this up because the last thing TikTok needs is another enemy. <laughs> they are- They don't want to be kicked out of the app store. They don't want to be kicked out Pretty of much the- truly. Right. Well, they don't want to be kicked out of America because that yeah. TikTok ban was uh, supposed to be signed by uh, the president of the United States today. If you're watching this live, this is Wednesday. If you're watching this on Friday as a regular um, follower, Biden should have already signed the, ba the ban the ban to where TikTok has about a year, a little bit less than a year to sell off TikTok from ByteDance or else be banned. Mm -hmm. So that's all the news that's going on right now. TikTok is trying to fight it. You know, uh, the, the senators and House of Representatives and people are saying, look, we can get this out of here because the whole Chinese connection 
Mm -hmm. You know, so my thing is the last thing TikTok needs is to make another enemy with a company as big as Apple big, oh, yeah. <laughs> by trying to skate on paying them commission. My assumption yeah. is TikTok would cozy up super tight with Apple because they need some people on their side. Yeah. And <laughs> if I was Apple and TikTok was trying to skate, I'm like, all right, you bet. need to pay me. You need to pay me back. Where my back pay at? Right. No, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lobbying with the other my 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 lobbyists in washington dc yeah get tiktok on up out of here because yeah they, they ain't coming up off my money <laughs> so they trying to stick me from my paper well, just making too many enemies <laughs> they're just making yeah. too many enemies in the united states and it's like all right y'all need to straighten up because my the thing last is if you know you're doing something foul and you already got the spotlight on you. Why? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I guess money is a is a is a is a very serious drug. And it's like, look, we try to keep all the money we can, but at to what expense? Because if you already have the government, uh, the United States government saying, you know, you got to get out of here unless you divest, basically from China, mm -hmm. uh, China back company, mm -hmm. um, you got to get up out of here. And now you have one of the biggest companies, not just in America, but in the world, and you're skipping them. You're jipping them out of money. It's just like, mm, if you're willing, that. if you're willing to cheat Apple, it's not a stretch to say that you are not cheating America. That's too of a such a broad thing. You're just doing some suspect stuff. If if you're doing this, basically under Apple's nose. Who's to say? What else are you doing? Who's to say that if China came knocking for mm. something, you wouldn't give it up because you're already yeah. showing to be, oh, just take my word for it, is not yeah. holding a lot of water <laughs> because you you're are- You're not being trustworthy. Exactly. And that's the whole point exactly. around them trying to get them up out of the United States right. with China being their backing is you're mm -hmm. giving us more reasons to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. This band might actually be mm -hmm. the best way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, do it. They aren't doing themselves any favor by continuing to do this, yep. or at least not making some attempt to be like, okay, yeah, this is what we did. We shouldn't have done it. Our bad, but this is what we're gonna do to fix it going mm -hmm. forward, or something. Giving some sort of, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is some sort of like compromise or say, or, you know, basically fall on your sword to say, yeah, we messed up, but you know, this is what we're going to do to fix it because we do want to, you know, stay in Apple compliance and not right. mess that up. So, but which is weird though, right? Because we've been reporting on Apple easing up on the app store and in app purchases and allowing some companies to redirect their users mm -hmm. to a third party processing service. I would assume that companies like TikTok with the leverage that they have because they have a ton of users mm -hmm. and a ton of users go to the app store to download TikTok. I would think they would use that as leverage to say, yo, we want in on this new agreement that allows us. Give us to, that. Right. We'll take that. <laughs> right. Right. But the fact that they didn't yeah. and are sending out these messages to users and this story in nine to five Mac screenshotted a couple of these messages that end users are getting to where TikTok is flat out saying, yo, save yourself some money and go to this link to recharge oh, wow. your coins or cookies or whatever you call them. Click this link to avoid service fees. That's like you playing in my face. <laughs> really? You are bold, sir. You are bold. Yep. Wow. Right. So, so we'll see. Apple, the TikTok is not doing themselves no kind of favors at all. Yikesy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. So uh, we're done with the lowdown. We're going to move into second string. And the story that I wanted to talk about is almost almost a continuation of the humane AI pin that was recently released and able mm -hmm. for purchase and able for review, which they sent it out to. Uh, certain reviewers, and they pretty much trashed the humane AI pen. We talked about it a week or so before. Mm -hmm. Nothing worked. Nothing worked as designed. Everything was like a wish sandwich, like we wish or we hope that this stuff will work in the near future. But in the mm -hmm. meantime, give us $700 and $25 a month to kind of wish 
that this thing or hope that this thing works in the future. Well, here comes the rabbit AI It's kind of a similar thing. It's a handheld device. It's not something that you put on you or attach to you like the humane AI pen. It is an alt, but it is a secondary thing or something that you carry in addition to like a smartphone. This one is only $200. This one connects to your phone so you don't have to pay that extra $25 a month service fee. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like it was more streamlined in the things that it does. The humane mm -hmm. AI pen was kind of all over the place. You can do this and you can do that and you can do this thing and you can do mm -hmm. that thing. You can do this thing and the other. It can put screen and on your hand and pr produce images. The human mm -hmm. rabbit AI was kind of like, look, we are a, uh, think of us as a executive assistant. This is your AI assistant and mm -hmm. you can talk to it and you can give it instructions mm -hmm. and it will complete tasks and do things on your behalf. You think of, a, mm -hmm. a, of an assistant, hey, assistant, schedule this, my morning jog with my coworker, move it from seven o'clock to nine o'clock because of whatever mm -hmm. reason. The rabbit AI can go out and do that for you if it can, if you can teach it how to do that, or if it has the built-in sequences for you to do that. Right? It mm -hmm. has a screen, it has a scroll wheel, it has a speakerphone. You can talk to it. You can take pictures of things, or you can put things in the camera's view and say, "What is this?" And the mm -hmm. thing is supposed to tell you what it is. Not all that different from a smartphone, <laughs> but you know. It is a single use, not single use. It is a device that ideally is supposed to get us away from our phones because everybody's mm -hmm. all in TikTok. They're all in social media. They're all in their phones all day long. People are getting thumb and finger issues. People are clearly getting eyesight issues, staring at their screens all, staring at their phones all day. We are detached from each other. If you go to a restaurant or you go to an event, Everybody's sitting on their phones. So I get the idea behind a humane AI pen and the rabbit AI because ideally you want to be more engaged. Mm -hmm. And these things simplify processes to keep you more engaged. Right. The problem with that is they don't, they, they whack coming out. It's, it's, I don't want to call it a solution looking for a problem because ideally, like you say, you want to, well, it's, it's the, the problem is we, the way I see it, the problem is we're too attached to our phones. Mm -hmm. So to be able to have this other device that is not so involved, it does simple tasks that would get you away from your phone, right? That is yeah. the problem. And the solution they have are these devices that do that. They're AI okay. they're built in the, they're built into all these different things to where you can talk to it or you can click on a couple of things and it does kind of the same task as you would on your smartphone, right? Mm -hmm. The problem with that is it don't do none of those things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Rabbit AI came out and, you know, I've got a couple of links to a couple of, of uh, reviews and we'll put those in the show notes. But, you know, CNET basically says, give it time, but it don't do anything that it's supposed to do and it is not replacing your smartphone anytime soon which again mm -hmm. in my opinion the whole point of using these things is to get you out of your phone yeah. but they don't do none of the things that your phone does so that dream you got to wait on that a little bit longer right yeah you know i i put a link from mk uh, mkbhd who kind of <laughs> gave it to the humane ai pen and he kind of gave it to the rabbit ai as well he said yeah it is it's inexpensive, it's less involved, but it don't do none of the things <laughs> that the company claims it can do now, right? Yeah. So his whole thing was, if you're going to buy this thing for what it could be, that's fine. But just know you are spending however much, I think it's $200. You're spending $200. Mm -hmm for your you're, you're investing $200 into something that doesn't work out the gate. Right. They promised so, all, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so we talked, when I was on DTNS last week, we talked about this thing. Mm -hmm. And my, what, with all these things, I, I like the idea of innovation. We definitely need to be thinking forward. 
what's next, what's the next thing. But my thing is, are we just doing innovation for the sake of innovation's sake? And I did kind of do compare and contrast for, you know, between the AI pin and this rabbit R1. And compared to the humane pin, it's better, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But does this thing solve a problem that I have? And to me, that answer is no. Could it? Sure. Right. But spending, people are very conscientious of money partic- right now. I'm conscientious of, you know, my physical things I have to carry. Mm-hmm. I already have to carry a phone. Mm-hmm. I got AirPods. Mm-hmm. You know, my watch is on. That's fine. I got my wallet. I got, you're giving me more stuff to right. carry. Right, right. But it's not improving my life. At this point, with these devices that people are creating and developing, what, how is this making right. my life easier, right. better, adding to the quality of life, other than just giving me another piece of hardware that's going to, granted, these things aren't huge, but it is something else for me to mm-hmm. keep up with. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to take less things right. with me when I leave the house, not more, and then it doesn't work. The same thing I said with the humane pen when we talked about it is if you're going to do this, do one, maybe two, or even three things really, really well. Do those things really, really well. Mm-hmm. And then you may not get you know, slam so much, but you're trying to do too much at one time with a completely new piece of technology that people aren't used to. It's something new. And you know how people are, we're creature of habit. You're giving me something else and it's not even good. Right. So the, yeah. I just don't understand it. Yeah. That's the thing. I could, I can see and respect the argument that they're trying to make. Mm-hmm. The problem that I have is either A, put out the full product and wait, Mm -hmm. wait until you've got the, till you've got it mastered. Now, nothing's going to be a hundred percent. Nothing's going to work flawlessly. Right. But when companies in, and MKBHD kind of alluded to this point, when companies put out a product, they heck, it comes up with an idea. They find out if it's feasible, they make it, they put it out. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you know, through updates and improvements, whatever the case may be, it gets better. But the product is the product. What some of these entrepreneurs and startups are doing now is kind of like, all right, here's this thing <laughs> in the future is going to do da 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 da. But you got to pay full price right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Versus. All right. We've got this idea. We've got this thing. We, it's still not fleshed out. We need mm-hmm. the help from the community. We need the support. Tell us how you want this thing to work and we'll kind of build this thing as we go open source. You know, we're trying to build community. Here's this thing, you know, it's inexpensive. This is just the start. Mm-hmm. Hang in there with us. We promise we'll do our best to make this into a product that you then actually decide, okay, I can use this. Mm-hmm. Now let me figure out where this fits in my life or where can I reduce other things? They're not doing mm-hmm. that. They're saying, it can do all these things. Here's mm-hmm. the full price. Cross your fingers. <laughs> right. And my thing is, it's $200. Sell it for $50. People, $50 is like a meal. And it's right. like, you know what? Okay, I could I could do that. And if it's not that great, it's fine. It, right. I'm out of a dinner. Right. But when you start to get into, you know, the hundreds, mm-hmm. then that turns out to be something else. And my thing is, you take the feedback and you go back to the drawing board. What if you come up with a better design based on what you've learned? Mm-hmm. Now I got this $200 device that's not even going to be the latest when you come out with the next thing because you're not just always going to do a software update. Right. You're likely going to do a hardware update as well. Now I have this out of date thing that it's out of date may quickly. work. Yeah, it may work with your new software, but then you may have added some stuff to the software that's not even compatible with, with what yeah, I have. And right. now I'm just completely out because right. what do you and, want? And it don't do nothing right now. You can it does have the AI built in. So you can point the camera at a plant or point it at a building or point it at a car and say, What is this? And it'll tell you. 
You can do the same thing. You can do similar to a song is playing. You can say, what song is this? And it'll think about it and it'll give you the answer, right? The only, and or you the, could just do it with your phone. <laughs> Use get, Google Lens. I was Use getting, Suzanne. I was yeah. getting, I was getting that jumpy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The 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 sales and marketing really jumped in when they were like, all right, if open AI or whatever AI that they're using to uh, give you this information, right, is not enough. You can actually program this and you can add their, their, their R1 will watch your keystrokes and it'll watch your screen and you can, it'll watch how you do things and it'll get better at learning how to do it to where it'll do it for you. And they give you examples, you know, like Uber and whatever. But at launch, I'm paying full price and I'm only getting four integrations. Yeah. Three of which I don't even use. I think one of them, <laughs> it was, it was Uber. It was uh mid journey. It was um, one of the food. Um, DoorDash. DoorDash. And then um, was it a music? Was it Spotify? I can't remember. It's Spotify, yeah. I don't use Spotify. I don't do the the DoorDash enough. And what the hell is a Mid Journey? <laughs> I'm only I'm the only functionality I'm getting out of the box that I can use that I can see most people using is Uber. And again, mm -hmm. going back to your point, I can do that on my phone right now. <laughs> I can do that on my watch. I can say, hey, lady get me an Uber and I don't have to have carry anything new. You want me to pay $200 for a wish or a hope sandwich, you know, when you could easily like say, all right, work with us. Let's build this thing together. We're going to make it inexpensive to start with. But as we build more features, as we get more functionality, we'll get newer versions to we'll get better design, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. They're selling this as this is the product buy it now. And then maybe, you'll get some functionality in a couple of years. I don't think nobody works like that. <laughs> no. And I look at the mid journey. Mid journey is a app is an image generator. Oh, okay. All right. How but, is that really going to help you on this device? You could see it has a screen, but what's the resolution on this screen? Is right. the screen even that great that if you say, you know, make me an image of a dog on a surfboard on the beach, is it really going to show that, that great detail? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And are, yeah. Can, can you then send it to your phone? Can you, yeah. you know, airdrop like, what it do you or do with it? Yeah. right text message? What well, you know? How do you get it off of yeah. this thing if I want to use it for something? So, yeah, it's um, you can tell that they got a lot of startup capital. <laughs> so you apparently, know. it was a big deal at um, CES. Okay. Apparently, this was one of the most buzziest Darlings, products from yeah. CES. Yeah, mm -hmm. that everybody was talking about. So that's why it's like, ooh, yay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, clearly um, <laughs> they got enough money to make all these promises in the hopes that we'll bite. And it doesn't look like we're biting according mm -hmm. to these reviews. Now I know uh, Rob Dunwood said he's gonna, he put in the, um, uh, he put in the order. I think he's on wait list or something like that. And he should get mm -hmm. it in June. I think is what he okay. said. So he's getting one of these things and he's of the mindset of it's just two hundred dollars. If it don't work, it don't yeah. work, you know, yeah. which I guess it makes sense. But like for them to put out the for the limited functionality of this thing, it should not be two hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it should not and my be. thing is so when they add more apps, what do you have to do? Do you have to plug it into something to get the I download think, of the apps? I How think the, there is no app. So again, that is the, 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 the potential of this thing is you don't download apps because when you go into your smartphone, everything is an app. Everything is an app. Everything is an app. You can either, you can go to the website to do some merch things, but everything mm -hmm. is an app, right? So mm -hmm. rabbit and rabbit and them <laughs> were like, yo, wouldn't it be nice if you could just do certain functions? and don't hmm. necessarily need an app. You tell it to get you an Uber, it gets you an Uber. You tell it to play the song, you tell it to do whatever. You don't have to open up the app and say, Spotify, hmm. do this, or open up the Uber app and say, do I want I want an Uber XL and I want it at this place and that you should be able to with our- But how is that linked? How is that linked to your personal information script, though? It, you gotta give it permission. You do have to give it permission. 
to your account information and you do have to sh quote unquote show it how to do these things so it kind of records mm. it's almost like um uh what do you not automation but um uh, scripting you kind of show it the process it watches your keystrokes and it does all these things oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it learns how you do it and then it can go eventually go in and do it but again they've only got the four apps ain't nobody putting in all that time just to figure out how to get uber for two hundred dollars when you can just, just get, pull up your phone and i can say, just i can do it hey, right now girl you know theory right uh book me an uber going whoever you can mm -hmm. all you can already do these things. You can things. already do those these things. Again, the promise, the the potential was get out of your phone, click this button, and get most of the things done. But we ain't we ain't nowhere near that point to where I could actually have that conversation with myself and say, hmm, yeah, maybe I can leave my phone in my pocket or leave it at the house and carry this thing around that it's smaller, it's lightweight. There's no signals, there's no battery, even though MKBH, MKBHD's <laughs> review is like the battery drains stupid fast. <laughs> I got to charge this thing multiple times a day. That's just like another reason for me not to no. carry this thing. And carry. I've already got to deal with my watch. I've already got to <laughs> deal with my phone. I've already got to deal with my AirPods battery. Why well, I got to deal with another thing that drains battery so fast. So yeah, this is- they're trying to They're trying to solve a problem that one i don't think is that big of a problem but if if you're trying to solve big problems you got to do it better right? Uh, right i get the idea that you know people are always on their phones or but now you just want me to always be on your device <laughs> right, so right. instead of me always being on my phone on my phone on my phone now i'm just going to be like on on your device it's it's still you're still plugged into yeah, 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 yeah. another device. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get <laughs> well, it. Well, we, we shall see. They are out and running. So these things are available for purchase or yeah. available to get reserved. If you uh, want to formulate your own opinion, I don't have one. I don't yeah. have any intention on getting one, but uh, maybe you do. And we'll make sure to, if we know somebody like our podcasting counterparts, we'll make sure to hit them up. <laughs> with yeah. their overviews or their <laughs> reviews right. or whatever they can to see how that works and see how different it is from a smartphone, which all conclusions point to not that much. <laughs> not that much. It's just more work for me. <laughs> right. All right. All right. So that's going to do it for second string. We're going to move into the cult to for the culture where we talk all things culture from a cultural or social media standpoint. Uh, something I wanted to bring up, uh, we talked about it earlier in the pre-show, got to be a Patreon supporter to get that information. But basically what we talked about, we alluded to LeBron and he and his retirement, retirement, his, we are all looking at when LeBron is going to retire, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that he mentioned, he put into the atmosphere was it would be nice to stay in the NBA long enough to play with my son. Right now, his son that we all call Bronny is declared himself for the NBA draft after one season of college. I, I can't remember where he played. Was it UCLA? Uh, USC. Uh, USC. Uh, uh, Southern close. California. Close. Yeah. Um, one season uh, with USC has declared himself for the draft, which if you line up the timelines, if LeBron doesn't fall off the face of the earth within the next two to three years, that dream could possibly come true to where LeBron and his son, Bronny will be on an NBA court at the same time. The issue or the challenge is do the Lakers want to entice LeBron by making some moves to possibly get Bronny on the Lakers so they can be not just on the court at the same time, but on the same team. And mm -hmm. is LeBron going to, or currently, you know, throwing his weight around to make that happen, to right? Make it happen. Um, the issue that I wanted to talk to about was, of course, I mean, people already hate LeBron James. So it doesn't matter what he says, what he's do, people are going to hate him. Yeah. But with this particular story, 
they're saying, oh, well, if he wasn't LeBron's son and we know why all this attention is being garnered towards Bronny because he's LeBron's son. He's a mediocre uh, college player. And the only reason why he can declare for the draft and the only reason why he'll have high prospects is because anybody that's looking to get LeBron, probably the best way to do that would do, would be to promise getting picking up his son. Ah, mm -hmm. nepotism, the only way, you know, you, that's and that. And I wanted to talk about this because mm -hmm. the ultimate point that I'm seeing people are making with LeBron and his son is nepotism, mm -hmm. you know? And my question is, or my statement is, duh, <laughs> if you were of any sort of importance or influence and you could make it possible for your kids to be put in a better position, I can't think of one person who would not do that and say, yo, 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 you, you gotta, mm -mm, I'm stepping I out the way. I had to struggle all my yeah, life. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. You gotta, I gotta, you gotta make the mistakes on your own, uh, because that's how I did it. I can't think of one person, present company included to where I don't do things to put my kids in a better position, if only because they are my child. Right. <laughs> so I'm finding it hypocritical at best yeah. as to why they are lobbing this oh, Nepo baby at LeBron when mm -hmm. they know good and well, if they were in LeBron's position, the whole reason yeah. why LeBron put himself in this position to provide a better future for his kids and his offspring. And so the nerve of y'all to kind of ding him for that, it's like, all right, that's disingenuous at the least and hypocritical at the most because yeah. you would do it too. <laughs> Absolutely. We have this whole Nepo baby culture where now you have actors, musicians, athletes, mm -hmm. business people who are, you know, sliding their kids on into this. And let's be clear, nepotism, Nepo baby, this isn't anything new. Right. It's not specific to the entertainment industry. Right. People have been doing this forever. Right, forever. It's Since because it's 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 the thing is if isn't that like part of the whole thing of uh you know the saying you know each generation gets better mm -hmm. you want to make it easier what's the whole point of everybody talking about legacy or you right. know my children I'm trying to forge my legacy someone to carry my name and people of all economic statuses have that same type of thing I'm mm -hmm. creating my legacy that's why I'm having kids. Your legacy is to be better, right? So each generation is supposed to get better, right? You're, the things that you go through, you can speak to it as a parent, is to make things easier for the people that you choose to bring into this world. So the fact that, you know, it's like this hate train or whatever on the situation, it really is disingenuous because actors do it. Like I mm -hmm. mentioned, there's a whole crop of Hollywood stars who lived, you know, these kids, Bronny, his other, his brother, his sister, you know, all of these kids have grown up in excess, have grown up in, you know, not having to worry about a thing and having everything. So this life is not new to them. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what they know. So I don't, again, I think it's part of the LeBron hate train stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but just in general, if you own a business mm -hmm. and it's successful, it doesn't have to be a multi-million dollar industry. It doesn't have to be a multi-dollar, but if it provides a comfortable, nice life, if you have a child who's interested in that- Or not. <laughs> aren't you going to put them on? Absolutely. Yeah. Or yeah. if you, or if they even, even if they have a different interest, say if, you know, I think both of LeBron's sons play basketball. Mm -hmm. Say their daughter, I think she's kind of, um, I think she has like her own like YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. She's a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, so like go on the influence. If you have the means to fund your children's dreams, mm -hmm. no matter. Or provide them resources and it got to be money. Or resources to do it. Yeah. yeah. Or, or introduce them to people. Right. Networks. Because people, mm -hmm. All of these things are considered nepotism because you're quote unquote putting them on. So that they can succeed. Yeah. It, That's the whole point. My my issue with this whole thing with LeBron and Bronny is 
you mentioned he, you know, played one year mm -hmm. and it was even a question of him even being able to play that year because mm -hmm. that summer before he started, he had a heart thing, mm -hmm. had to make sure his heart was okay health scare. to play. Yep, huge health scare. And he goes in, he does get to play. He's averaging like four points, I think. Mm -hmm. I think his average is like four points. So he is a mediocre player. My issue with this is it's from what it seems or what it's in LeBron statements and what has been put in the media is that he does want to play with his son. Okay. My issue with this is, are they forcing this on this young kid? Cause uh, he's yeah. what, barely 19. Yeah, yeah. Are they, was there a push from forces outside of him right? or even inside of him? Because that's his dad. He wants to right. make his dad happy. He wants right. to please his dad. Is he being pigeonholed? into forcing himself to go into the draft to fulfill the dreams of someone else. Right. And it not necessarily being, you know, his dream or mm -hmm. it, 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 it very well could be, he wants to go to the NBA. Great. Fine. But for his skill level, for what he's done in this one year, he doesn't have to go to the NBA or to the league straight out of college out of mm -hmm. you know first year to provide for his family to provide mm -hmm. a better life his, right, family, right. his family already got a great life right. so a lot of times when people say they're one and done it's because it's like you know what i can get hurt at any minute i right. need to go to the league and make this money potential life for my yeah. mom and all these things he ain't gotta do that right, right. that's not his struggle mm -hmm. so what's the force behind forcing yeah. him i think too early right. to go into the league other than it being revolving around his dad right. or uh, what people are saying, you know, he needs to go so he can play with his dad or, you know, his dad's like, well, maybe I only have a year left or whatever. I just think right. my issue with this is, are they really considering this young man and right. what he truly wants? Or you, you hope they do. That's for him. Yeah. You hope they are. Right. right. You just, you just wonder what are the, is this really what this Kid young man needs. Is this what he wants? And is this, right. is this the best for him? Right. Is him going to the league when he's not ready? Is this best for him? Because once you go to the league, you in it. You can't right. go back. And is he going to be one of those players that gets bounced around from team to team right. because they can't really use him? Right. Or, you know, he, he hasn't developed the way they want him to. His dad's out of the league. His dad, you know, one of one freak of nature came in and did all these great things. He's already named after, they call him Bronny, but he's LeBron James Jr. Mm -hmm. He already has that extra weight on him. And it's just like, I worry that it's way too much being placed on this kid who's barely 19 because of all of these other people's dreams and wishes and hopes, whether it be for the NBA so they can make more money, for it, whether it be for the team that he goes to, he can, they can make publicity off of him, or whether it's for his dad to make his dad happy. Right. That's my concern with this whole thing. Not that, you know, his dad is helping him get through. Hell, anybody who has any type of influence in whatever industry there is, they're in, if they mm -hmm. can help their child make it easier for them to transition or help them into doing something, they're going to do it. Again, my thing is, is this young man's interest truly being served with right. all of it? And you can make that case because, like you mentioned, he had a health scare. Um, he's mediocre. <laughs> let's just let's just say it. The you numbers know, don't lie. Yeah. Right. And that could be because of the health scare. You know, yeah. maybe, you know, next year, whether he's playing in college or he's in the NBA next year, he could take off and become this superstar. But he's yeah. always He's always going to be in the shadow of his father, yeah. whether he wants to or not. And there is a history of superstar athletes whose kids kind of flame out. You know, you think of Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. full stop right there, right? Full stop. And, right. So, you know, like you make a good case. Even if he don't want it. Or even if he does want it, even if he does want to enter the NBA as soon as possible, even if he does want to play with his father, because that would be a dope thing in general, you mm -hmm. know, just in general, let alone your father being LeBron James, right? Yeah. That's that's something that makes sense for a 
kid to want to follow in his father's footsteps in general, let alone mm -hmm. LeBron James footsteps, yeah. right? But even if he does want it, you know, you still have to ask, is this even what's best for him? Yeah. And another thing parents have to do is also have to do what's best for their kids. And maybe in LeBron's case, he maybe could or should talk to LeBron to Bronny and be like, yo, maybe you need to prove yourself you know, prove of yourself or prove to yourself mm -hmm. that you are worthy of going in the NBA by spending a little bit more time in college or, mm -hmm. you know, taking some time away from basketball to decide if this is something you want to do. You're my son. If you go off for a year and decide I want to get back, oh, we're going to make sure you get back in here, Jack, yeah. you know. But yeah, is this I got that kind of pull. Right. Yeah. Is this something that you actually want to do? And you definitely yeah. hope that this path that he's currently on like you mentioned is something he wants to do versus trying to live up to the expectations of others yeah and i think one last thing i think the way he declared i think he still keeps his eligibility for college well he kind of did both and just because he declared for the nba draft uh -huh. he can still rescind that yeah. but what he also did was enter the transfer portal to say if U.S. you know, and I'm just speculating here, if USC is like, oh, okay, so you, you going you for the NBA draft? You well, all right, bet. <laughs> you know, he still yeah. has ability. He still has ability to still make it make a name for himself, maybe on another team. Yeah, but if he does get drafted, well, I don't know. You make a make me bring up a good point. I don't know if it's like NFL or. Um, so, like, so say he goes to the draft and no one picks him up. Does Is he able to go back to college? I don't know. My assumption was no. But maybe he's declared the NBA draft and there's a cutoff point, a cutoff time. I don't know. Hmm, I don't know. All right. Well, anyway, well, again, hopefully they're doing what's best for that kid and hope he's doing what's best for himself. So we'll we time. We shall see, because this, this yeah. is going to happen in another year or two. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's going to be it for the culture. We're going to move into the hookup. Uh, we talked earlier in the show about the iPhone alarm clock bug, and they there were people who were experiencing issues to where the alarm clock, they set the alarm clock on their iPhone. It doesn't go off at all, or if it's muted, right? Apple says there's a fix, but until then, I think there's a way for you to um, a work around to get the alarm to come back on. And one of the ways you can do it is by turning off the attention aware feature. And basically for those who don't know, the attention aware feature on certain iPhones, it can sense that you are looking at the screen and it can turn on, brighten up, do whatever the case may be. That's not for all phones, but I think like the 14 and the 15, have this attention aware feature, maybe even younger, to where it basically does just that. If you're looking at the screen, it notices that you're looking at it, brightens up the display, even maybe automatically unlocks if you're looking directly at it. So the workaround, my hookup for the week is you have to turn off that attention aware feature in order to get the alarm clock back. And if you want to do that, basically what you do is you go to iPhone settings, then you go to face ID and passcode, then you go to attention aware features. And on that attention aware attention and aware feature, you toggle that off. The word on the street is when you turn that off, then you can then set an alarm and you can actually hear the alarm when it goes off. So again, if you depend on that attention aware feature, you got to figure out what's more important. Is the attention aware feature important or is me getting up in the morning for work <laughs> important, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, hopefully. Apple has a fix out for that to where you can then go in and turn that attention aware feature back on and be assured that you can use your alarm clock. But in the meantime, in between time, if you do depend on your alarm clock, my hookup for the week is if you're experiencing that iPhone alarm clock bug, you definitely want to try to turn off the attention aware feature to get your alarms when you actually set them. Nice. All right, so that is it for the hookup. And Nika, if you don't have anything else, I think that's going to do it for this week's show. Uh, tell the folks where you, they can find you. You can find me all over the interwebs at Tech Savvy Diva. 
And you can find me all over the internet at Brother Tech. That's B R O T H A T E C H. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, or maybe I didn't even mention it in this show, but I'll mention it again. Uh, we will be on DTNS next week. I think it's next Tuesday for the May 7th. What's it called? It let's let loose. Let loose Apple event. Uh, we don't know what they're going to announce, but all directions point at some sort of Apple pencil, maybe with some new gestures, maybe even a new iPad or two. But we'll let you know uh, yeah. when we're on the DTNS uh, uh, Daily Tech News Show next week. Uh, if you want to find out where we're at in general, definitely go to snoboscast.com to get all those details. And until next week, we are out. Peace. Bye, everybody.